they travel for treatment, uh, for uh, operation or so on, or uh, wealth as we mentioned. Uh, this should be health actually, body or health. All right, and we can also uh, categorize travel in terms of rulings, right? Rulings, so you have travel that is wajib, such as? Huh? Hajj, all right? You have to make Hajj, so it's, that travel for Hajj becomes wajib, all right? Or Umrah, وَأَتِمُ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that complete the Hajj and Umrah for Allah. All right, or travel that is uh, recommended, mandub, such as? Hmm? All right, Nafil Hajj, or Nafil Umrah, all right, or visiting relatives, all right, and so on. Or travel that is mubah, permissible, right, traveling for trade, all right, traveling trade, traveling for just getting a vacation or so on. Uh, traveling that is makruh, disliked, such as, anybody have an example of that? Dislike travel. Okay. Traveling to a place of Dar al a place of a war with Muslims, that might even be impermissible, Allahu Alam. What possibly? Okay, places where haram takes place. And if, it's, if you're sure there's a haram in the same place, then that might be haram. If it's a possibility, then then might go down to, to be makruh. All right? Um, yes, good. Traveling or leaving. Leaving the town that has a plague, yeah, if, yeah, but leaving, going to it, or also leaving it, right? Leaving, if you're in a town that has a plague, you should not, you should not leave either. You should not travel to it, and you should not leave from it. All right, and then of course there's traveling for haram, somebody going and stealing, traveling to steal from the hujjaj. There are people who did that. There are pe people in history, imagine that. There are the people who traveled, not to make Hajj or to make Umrah, so they could steal from the Hujjaj. All right, so I mean, that is a different level of, of theft. That would be under Mubah. Mubah, Mubah permissible. Uh, traveling for like no particular reason. Yeah, that would that would be under uh, permissible, right? Permissible, the which is there's no reward if you do it, there's no sin if you do, if you don't do it. All right, reality of travel. <clears throat> Rasulullah SAW says in hadith that safaru qit'atun min al-adab, that travel is a portion of punishment. Travel is a portion of punishment. In other words, travel is difficult, right? There's difficulty in travel, more so back in the days, more so back in the days, but even now there's still difficulty in travel. Right? Even now, despite the, the technological advances, despite uh, the comfort that we have in travel, travel still remains something difficult because you're getting out of your comfort zone. Right? You're getting out of your comfort zone and you are leaving what's normal to abnormal. And that's always something slight, you know, there's, there's difficulty in it. There is difficulty in it. So even though the, uh, the modes of transportation and means of travel have become easier, Travel will always be uh, difficult relative to the standard of living, right? So, so we have, the standard of living has also increased, right? So, you know, we live relatively much better than those who lived in the past, right? Um, so their travel was more difficult back in the day, but their also living was also more difficult back in the day as well. So our traveling is easier today, but our living is easier as well. But there's always going to be that uh, di distinction between our living and our travel. Travel is always going to be a little bit more difficult because you're getting out of your, your comfort zone. You have to uh, adjust your schedule, your sleep patterns. So there is some type of difficulty even in today's modern age uh, for travel. Uh, right? So this applies even to today. Even with the modern advances in travel and comfort, there is still going to be uh, some type of discomfort. It might not be as much as it used to be, but there's some kind of discomfort in traveling. All right, traveling brings out your true personality. All right, and they say this is the reason why it's called safar, because it uh, brings out a person's personality. You see who you really are when you travel, all right? Well, you see how you really are when you travel. So some people, when they're, when they're traveling, you know, they start to get very agitated and you know, um, impatient 
all right? And that's, you know, that's not a good sign. But this is, it brings out your personality. And there's a statement of Umar radiallahu an where a man was being praised in front of Umar radiallahu an. And so Umar asked him a few questions. You know, you're praising this man. You really know him. So he asked him, are you his neighbor? And Umar said, no, I'm not his neighbor. Then he asked him, did you do any business or trade with him? And he said, no. And then he asked him, did you travel with him? Did you accompany him in travel? And he said, no. And then he said, Umar said, then you don't know him. You don't actually know him. All right? Because if, you didn't, if you're not his neighbor, or you didn't do business with him, or you didn't travel that person, then you don't know them. And then none of the narration means, said, uh, goes on to say that maybe you saw him praying in the masjid. That's why you, know, you assumed he was uh, a righteous person. But you didn't, uh, you didn't live with him, or you, didn't, you weren't his neighbor, and you didn't uh, do business with him, and you didn't travel with that person. So travel brings out a person's personality. Because you have to you know, adjust your, 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 just your, your uh, living patterns, your, how, the time you wake up, and you have to make preparations. So traveling brings out a person's personality. Uh, so traveling needs provisions, right? You need provisions. This is called in Arabic as zad, zad, tr- uh, provisions. And you need provisions. Number one, of course, the provisions for the dunya. Food, drink. Don't forget about snacks, right? You need snacks, all right? Um, and clothes and whatever the case is. You need provisions for the dunya. But more important than that is the provisions for the akhirah. Right? Provisions for the akhirah, which is when you're traveling, you need to know some of the rules of provocation, the prayer, the fasting, other ibadah. And this is more important. All right? And uh, Ibn Qayyim has a book called Zadul Ma'ad, Fi Sirati Khayr al Ibad, where he, he names it after uh, provisions of the hereafter. And it's a book on sirah or, or fiqh, sl- fiqh slash sirah together, combined. So you need provisions for the dunya when you travel, but you also need provisions for the akhirah, meaning knowledge. Knowledge of what is required for purification, for fasting, for prayer, and any other type of ibadah. All right. Um, so the first thing we're going to discuss or in, in go over in general in, 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 as an overview are what we call rukhas as-safar, the dispensations of travel. In other words, what are the ahkam? that are affected by travel. What are the ahkam that are affected by travel? And there are a number of them. Uh, we're gonna mention seven of them and then go into a little bit more detail. Anybody could give some of those ahkam, ahkam that are affected by travel. Yes, okay, salah, okay, specifically. Joining uh-huh. and shortening. All right, what else? Fasting, okay. Good. Wiping over, a khufain. Okay. Mo- expand a bit more. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So if you're traveling, you might be in a situation where you can. There's something else to that. Expand upon that. You're on the right track. Looking for something else. Yeah, continue. Tayammum. Tayammum. Okay, the Tayammum verses, the verse of Tayammum, it's what Al-Ma'idah was revealed uh, for traveling. Right? When kuntum marla aw ala safarin. If you are sick or you're traveling, aw ala safarin, aw jaa ahadu minkum min al-ghaiit, or anyone who enters the, uh, the restroom, aw jaa ahadu minkum min al-ghaiit, aw la masu min nisa, if you touch women. Uh, then, uh, then the verse mentions and you don't find water and you don't find any water then you can make tayammum alright any other dispensations for travel <laughs> okay but we're looking at ahkam that are changing because of, the, because of traveling huh More details. Okay, so somebody passes away. You mean like burying them there versus traveling with them? Okay. Yeah, there's okay, there's some rulings related really to that as well. Uh-huh. Okay. <clears throat> so there's uh, there's a situation of eating the uh, the, the carry-on, 
right, for the person who doesn't find anything else. That is, that's, it can be for a residency as well, but it's the verses it was originally meant for when you're traveling. All right, so you can include that as well. Good, Juma. All right, so Juma drops right for a person who's traveling. Zakah, okay, Zakah for the uh, the, the wayfarer, Wabna Sabil. All right, it's mentioned in the verse as well with conditions, with conditions. All right, so we'll mention a few of them. We're not going to go over all the ahkam, but a few of them, such as wiping over the khufain, al masho al khufain li muddati thalathati ayam. So uh, when you are normally wiping over the khufain, this is the leather socks. You have one day and a night, right? One day and a night in normal circumstances. When you're traveling, this bumps up to three days. Three days along with the nights, right? So these, this, 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 this ruling, though, is not as relevant today, right? Because even when you're traveling, you know, you are going in a hotel, you're showering, you're taking off your socks anyway. So it's not as relevant. We're not going to spend much time on it, but... Uh, the dispensation is there to, you can keep wiping for three days, three full days and nights, all right? Three full days and nights. And this would obviously be more relevant in times where people are actually, actually on the road traveling and uh, they would be keeping on their, their socks, right? Their, 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 the khufain for uh, the duration, you know, days at a time, weeks at a time. So for them, this would benefit uh, people in those circumstances. All right, we mentioned tayammum as well, all right, tayammum. All right, this tayammum originally was uh, revealed for uh, when a person does not find water when they're traveling, right? As the verse mentioned specifically, when you're traveling, when you're traveling. Uh, as we said, shortening the prayer, qasr salah shortening the prayer. This is also a dispensation for traveling. al jamru bayn al-salatayn, combining prayers. All right, we also have التنفل راكبا أو ماشيا. All right, when you are traveling, there are certain dispensations. Dispensations when you are traveling and you intend to pray nawafil. If you want to pray nawafil, uh, which is that if you are on a riding animal, which would be in today's age, a car, airplane, boat, you have the option to pray and you don't have to face the qibla. All right, and this is comes in the Sunnah of Rasulullah that he would pray his nafil wherever the animal would be riding, whatever direction the animal was riding, and he would be praying, and he would not be doing these ruku, uh, actually in, in, in the official position or the sujood. He would just be uh, bending his head forward and uh, for the ruku, and then a little bit more further down for the sujood. All right, so this is when you are on, on an animal or in today's modern transportation, or even when you're walking. A person is walking, they can do uh, nafil. While they're walking, <clears throat> Even if they're not walking in the direction of the qibla, uh, they would just when they start the salah, they would uh, make the they would they would face the qibla when they're starting. Yeah, I should be still, yeah. <clears throat> so you should you would start the salah facing the qibla, and then wherever you're walking to, you can be praying, and you would not need to make the uh, you would not need to sit, right? You would not need to sit. You can the tashahud will be like standing position. Right, the tashahud will be a standing position. You will make ruku, right? But the, the, the tashahud will be like a standing position. You will make the ruku in the sujood normally, but then you can be walking and the tashahud will be in the this, in this standing position. Right? And you, don't, you won't need to be facing the qibla as you're walking. Yeah. Somebody's marching, or you're marching. Right? Like you are, the army is marching and they want to pray. Right? You're, you're, remember back in those days, not everybody had horses or camels to ride on. So some people are traveling by walking. All right, they're traveling by walking. So you can still offer the, the nawafil. And let's say your, your direction is right, uh, south. The qibla is this way. But you can still be marching. You can still be carrying on your, your travel and in worship at the same time. So nafil is any non fard prayer? Yes, any non fard prayer. Yes, any non fard prayer. Yeah. All right, praying the far is different, right? Then the requirements are the same as, as you are resident. You need to face the qibla, right? So if you are praying a far prayer, even if you're traveling, you need to still face the qibla, and the requirements are all the same. What happens if you're airplane? <clears throat> In terms of what uh, facing the qibla, standing or sitting? Okay, so 
So it's a controversial topic or debated topic. Generally speaking, though, the requirements are the same. You should, you sh the requirements are the same. And there are some people who are allowed sitting if you're not able to stand. But standing is a requirement for the salah. All right? It's a requirement for the salah. So if you're able to stand, you, you must stand. And you must face the qibla as well. If you're not able to do so, all right, if you're not able to do so and the time is running out, then you pray the for this uh, because of the time coming out, and then you re repeat the prayer afterwards. You will repeat it afterwards. All right, uh, so. <clears throat> On walking, right? So if you're doing the nafal prayers, walking, you, you face the qibla starting. You make your takbir to ihram starting by facing the qibla. And then afterwards, you can walk in whatever direction you're... you're, you're, okay. you're you praying, can, seat. If you're praying, you're praying seat, no. Right? Because that would take the ruling of like the riding animal, wherever, whatever direction it's going. Whatever direction it's going. Yeah. All right, if you're driving, as we said, if you're driving, you can, you can stop. You can stop and you can get out and you can stand. So the dispensation is for the nafal only. But I ask you, And that's also very dangerous. <laughs> that's not advisable at all. You should not, no, you should not be driving and praying your fard. Yeah. So for, for the, the fard, this is for all for the nafal, the, the, the voluntary prayers. The, the, the obligatory prayers, the rulings are generally the, the same, traveling or non-traveling. All right, uh, as we said, Jum'ah is not obligatory. Right? Uh, number six would be Jum'ah Jum is not obligatory. Suqutu wujub al Jum'ah for the one who is traveling. Right? The one who is uh, traveling. And obviously this applies to the people who are, uh, do Jum'ah to begin with, right? which is the adult Muslim meals. So if you're in a state of travel, then Jum'ah is not obligatory. But you can attend it. Right? There's nothing saying you can't attend it. You can't attend the Jum'ah, but it's not uh, mandatory. And as uh, we mentioned as well, uh, that you can uh, break the fast if you are traveling in a state of travel. Jawaz al fitri fi Ramadan. That you can break the fast uh, if you are traveling. But uh, you have to be in a state of travel in order for this ruling to apply. Right? You have to actually be in a state of travel. Uh, in other words, you have to uh, you have to start the day in a state of travel. If you are a resident, right, if you are a resident and the fasting becomes due on you and you're a your resident, you have to start that day fasting. All right? And then, let's, so let's say you have a, a flight at 1 p.m. All right? 1 p.m. You woke up that morning, you are a resident. All right? So you're not, you, don't have the, you don't have the hukum of a traveler. You're a resident. You're traveling later that day. You're not a traveler yet. So you have to fast that day. All right? when, once you start your travel, and then maybe if it's difficult, then you can break your fast based on difficulty. All right? not in, but you, you, still have to, you still have to fast. But if you, are, if you enter into the morning, all right, uh, uh, the time with, uh, of the fasting, and you're in a state of travel, that's when you have that dispensation to not fast that day, and then you make it up afterwards. All right? Then it's made up afterwards. You have to be in a state. Yeah. Uh, well, at the, at the state of, you have to be in a state of travel. A state of travel. That means that you're, 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 you have actually traveled. We'll get to that. We'll get to that afterwards. When do you actually become a traveler? All right. But uh, for the fasting, you have to, as we said, be, be, a, be a, in, in a state of a travel. Be a, the, the state of being a traveler. All right, so what we're going to focus on uh, is mostly today uh, combining and shortening the prayers, right? Shortening or combining the prayers. Uh, the nafal, as we mentioned, not much details to that. Uh, the wiping over the khufayn, that's not as applicable today. Tayammum, not very applicable today. So we're going to really be focusing on uh, the shortening the prayers and combining the prayers. All right, so the first thing is shortening the salah. Right, shortening the salah. And this is known as qasr, al qasr, shortening the salah. And the evidence for this is in Surah An Nisa, verse number 101. 
Anybody have their uh, uh, Bushaf or access translation? Open the translation of that verse. Surah An Nisa, verse 101. Surah An Nisa, verse 101. So Allah subhanahu wa says, وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَقْصُرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ When you are traveling in the land, there is nothing wrong in your, your shortening your prayer. Everybody, you found the verse? All right. Good. What do you notice about this verse? Condition. All right, what is the condition? If you fear. All right, now, when we're going on vacation or, you know, you're traveling to Canada or any other place, nobody has any fear, right? So why are you guys shortening your, your salah and, and combining? All right, the verse says, if you fear. All right, the verse says, there's nothing wrong. In khiftum yaftinakum kafru. If you fear that uh, <clears throat> the disbelievers will test you. Alright, anybody have an answer to that? Okay. Alright, so shortening the prayer is this is obviously alright, four unit prayers becomes two. And the evidence is sort of Nisa verse one oh one. Alright, so the verse, right? وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَقْصُرُ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ Didn't quote the entire verse here, but we saw that the, the rest of the verse mentions fear. Alright, but we have a hadith in Sahih Muslim in which uh, Ya'la ibn Umayya says that I said to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu when you are traveling in the land, there's nothing wrong in you, you're shortening your prayer. He's quoting the verse. And then he asks, and the people are safe. Alright, so he's asking about people are safe. The verse mentions fear. But now, uh, Omar is being asked, what if we're traveling and we have safety, there's no fear. So Omar radiallahu anhu, he said that, I wondered about this just as you are wondering. So I asked the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa about it and he said it is a charity that Allah has bestowed upon you, so accept his charity. All right, so Omar had the same exact question. And other sahaba probably had the same exact question, which is that the verse mentions the condition, if you fear. So they asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he said that, this is a charity, meaning that fear is not a condition. It is not a condition. All right? the, the context is in fear, or the original ruling, wisdom behind the ruling was fear, but it is not a condition. So you can shorten and combine the salah, so, so the salah even if there is no fear. And the proof is there in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, which Umar radiallahu anh said that, I asked about this, I asked Rasulullah about this, and he said that, it is a charity. All right, so this is an evidence that uh, you, don't, you, not, you do not need to be in a state of fear to apply these rulings. You can combine, you can shorten, even in safety and security. All right, conditions for shortening uh, in general. So when we are shortening our salah, there are conditions. All right, there are certain conditions, yes. We'll talk a little bit about it, inshallah. A little bit about it. Yes. <clears throat> Alright, so there are certain conditions before we can shorten the salah. Um, we'll go over them in, in, in general and then uh, go back a little bit more detail afterwards. Number one is that the salah must be owed while they're traveling and it must be performed while they're traveling. Alright, we're going to come back to this. Number two, going beyond the walls or buildings of your town of your town. <clears throat> and number three, not intending to stay for four days or more. Not intending to stay for four days or more. All right. A little bit more details. All right, number one, that a prayer that is owed while traveling be performed while traveling. This means that uh, the prayer, it must enter while you're in a state of travel. All right, so if you did not travel yet and the time for the prayer entered and then you traveled, that salah became due on you when? Before you traveled. 
so you cannot shorten. All right, so let's say I'm traveling at 3 o'clock. All right, the flight is at 3 o'clock. Dhuhr comes in at 1 o'clock. Dhuhr came in when I was a resident. So even if I don't pray Dhuhr on time, and I pray, I want to pray at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock, I have to pray that salah full. All right? I cannot shorten the salah. Because that salah became due upon me when I was a resident. I was not in a state of travel when the salah became due. All right? So the salah has to become due when you are in a state of travel for you to be able to shorten the salah. All right? And you have to perform it while you're in a state of travel. All right, so the salah became due while I'm traveling. I return home. What do I do? I didn't pray. So let's say I was traveling. Uh, Salatul Isha became due. And I reach home. I didn't pray Isha yet. I've now become back a resident. What do I do? Pray for. Right? Because even though the salah became due while traveling, you have to perform it while you're traveling. So if you become a resident then you need to perform it as a resident. All right, you need to perform it as a resident. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we're going to get to that. That's coming up, inshallah. That's coming up. When do you actually... A consider to be a traveler. Okay? <clears throat> so, for example, in your case, so it's you're traveling, Isha comes to you, but you get home before Isha. Mm -hmm. So you're saying because it, it's like, and you didn't pray. Mm -hmm. You're saying that because you get home, you have to pray for. You have to pray for. So if but you're, if yeah. You had prayed it as soon as it came in and you were traveling, mm -hmm. you only pray it. Yes. Yes. But now I'm actually on the flight to Isha. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm traveling. Yes. You're saying you still have to pray for? Because you have to pray for. Okay. Right? Because you are, the, the salah must have been, the dispensation is that you are traveling. If you're not traveling, then there's no dispensation. All right? The, the, the salah became due on you while you were a resident. So, there is the ruling of residency. And this is a general, this is a rule, right? This is a, this is a fiqh qaida that whenever there is a conflict between residency and travel, residency takes precedence. Right? This is a general qaida fiqhiyya that, that there is a, 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 a clash between residency and travel, ghulliba uh, al uh, Al-Iqama, right? That the Iqama takes precedence. Yes. So this is like the worst Yes. So you're 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 in a state of travel, and you will get back before the salah comes expires. Yeah, well, yeah. Once once you're in a state of travel, you can pray. You can pray the, the you, you can pray the shortened version, even if you're going to get back before, uh, and there's still time to pray left when you come back. You can still pray. All right. So, condition number one, right? That the, the salah is old while you're traveling and perform while you're traveling. All right. So the time enters before you travel, uh, and then you travel after that. Then it's not allowed to pray in the shortened form. Because you are not a traveler when it became obligatory on you. All right, if a person's time, uh, if prayer time enters when, when, while one is traveling, but one does not pray until he, he reaches his hometown, then once again, you're not allowed to pray in the shortened form because you're no longer a traveler and the shortening is only, only for the traveler. All right, number two, <clears throat> that one go beyond the walls of the town that they are traveling from or its buildings if it does not have walls. All right, these, uh, these rulings obviously were, were uh, written in times where you had towns and they had 
walls. They had what they call these aswar or sur, right? Where they had walls that would clearly demarcate where the, where the, where the town is ending, right? Or there would be buildings, right? So either there's walls or buildings. Once you leave the walls, right, which is the boundaries of the town, this is when you are in a state of travel. And you're, of course, intending to get to the distance. We'll get to the distance afterwards. But if you're intending to go to the uh, required distance, you can start to shorten the salah when you leave the boundaries of the town, which is the walls. If the town does not have walls, then it would be the buildings, once you leave the buildings. All right, now how does that apply here? Do we have, we don't have walls anymore, right? Uh, and there are buildings though. But we don't have walls, but we have boundaries, right? All the cities have boundaries, official boundaries. They all have boundaries, and you can, you can, you can see that, right? Um, you can find that out. You can do inter internet search, and you can see what the boundaries. The question, though, is what is meant by the town or, or, the, or the city? All right, if somebody asks uh, each person, like, where are you from? Or where do you live? I might get three different answers, right? Somebody might say Jamaica. Another person might say Queens. Another person might say New York City, All right? So which is considered your town or South Ozone Park, All right? This is, this is, this is one of a modern issue. It's not, it's, there's no simple answer to this, All right? What is considered the town, All right? What is considered the town? The safest thing obviously would be maybe the entire New York City, boundaries of New York City, which is the five boroughs, All right? That would be the safest um, position to take, which is that once you cross the, the boundaries of the five boroughs, then you are a traveler, all right? That's the safest. In a very technical way, we can say, I ask you, where do you live? What is your address? What do you say? What does it say on your mailing address? What does it say? South Olsen Park. Park. All right. Sometimes it's Jamaica, South, yeah, sometimes it's South Olsen Park. But if you want to go really technical, possibly that, you can say that. And there's, there are boundaries, right? South Olsen Park has boundaries. I don't know what they are exactly, but you can find it out, right? Or Jamaica has the boundaries. You can go online and you can see that this is Jamaica, the, 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 the borders are Jamaica are here, and then you go into the next, what is the next? Um, Richmond Hill, and there's um, Howard Beach, or, or whatever the case is. Well, this specific example, Jamaica here, you meant by the coastal Right, yeah, and those are, those are demarcated. Right, so how would we go about looking, I mean, you would, zip codes, right. Right. So the zip code is a bit different, right? The zip code is not, I mean, that's just your, where your, that's not necessarily your town. Well, you can say possibly what's before the zip code, which is Jamaica or South Ocean Park or wherever, all right? Um, possibly, and as I said, maybe the safest thing would be New York City, the boundaries of New York City, just so that you, know, you know, avoid any, any confusion there. But if you really wanna be technical, then you can say my city is Jamaica, and then you look at where it is, you know, the boundaries of Jamaica, and then uh, you're traveling. No, it's not, it's not about difficulty. It's about when do you become in a state of travel, right? It's about when you become in a state of travel. And the scholars have mentioned you become in a state of travel once you have left the boundaries of your town, all right? So it becomes a technical question as of when do you leave the boundaries of your town? When is that considered? Yes, so these rulings apply. So you can shorten your salah when, so you don't need to, you don't, you don't need to, you don't need to reach your destination before you can start shortening. Or you don't need to cover 50 miles right, uh, the 50 miles before you can short, start shortening. You can start shortening the salah once you leave your town. Once you leave your town. So if, if just for simple simplicity, you say Queens. Yeah, town, right? okay. Because there's no, no firmer boundary of Queens. Yeah. When I visit my brother's house, Queens, that's what I said. Queens, how do we intend to No, so this is, this is, that's another discussion. We're gonna get to that later on, which is you have to cover a certain amount of distance before you can be a traveler, all right? So there's, there's two discussions here. The discussion of 
how long, how, what's the distance, minimum distance, before a person is uh, able to shorten or combine the salah? All right, once you have that intention, all right, which is, we're going to mention, it's about you know, 50, 50 miles or so, 80, 80 kilometers or so. If you intend to, ca to cover that distance, all right, so I'm traveling and I'm intending to go 60 miles, all right, then I will take the ruling of a traveler. But when can I start shortening? Do I have to pass 60 miles or do I have to pass my town, leave my town? So that is, that's what we're talking about here, right? But if you are not going 60 miles, or you're not going more than 50 miles, you're, you're, you're visiting your brother Valley Stream, you're not a traveler, right? You're not a traveler. So that doesn't apply. But we're talking about specifically, you're intending to go a certain distance. And a certain distance, when can you start shortening? When you leave the, the boundaries of your town, right? When you leave the boundaries of your town. So, I live in a huge city. Yes. So, so you're sitting in your city and you're traveling from one city, one part of the city to the other. Yes, one other. And you're, as, you, 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 as long as you're in the city, yeah. then you won't be able to have the dispensation to travel. All right? And it's based on distance, though. It's not based on time. But is there any consideration for time? No, no consideration. <clears throat> yeah. Well, he, the, co, so he, combining based on what? Uh, on, on travel? Upon difficulty. Upon difficulty, that's a different... Distance. Yeah, so that's a different issue. Yeah. That, that's a different issue. Can you combine salah due to difficulties? Yeah. That's a different issue. All right, but for travel, no. All right, for travel, no. Shorten, no, shortening is only for travel. Sh shortening is only for, for travel. Combining, there's combining for travel, there's combining for rain, combining for sickness, those are three different issues. But we're on travel, we're going to stick to travel, all right? And then that will come later on, inshallah. Yes. Yes. It's not time for Zahar yet. Okay. Can you pray before the time? No. Under no circumstances can you ever pray before the time. Right? So the time must come in. Even if you, you so you're, you're, you're intending to travel. The time for the heart has not come in yet. No, you cannot pray. All right? You cannot pray before the time comes in. Under any circumstances. All right? Even one minute before the time, you cannot pray. The time must come in. That is a shart in shurut salah for the time to come in. Yes. 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 So you are, you left Queens, you're in Staten Island. So we're assuming that your town is Queens. Yeah. And you're intended to go to Washington, D.C. And the time for the Lord came in? Yeah. All right, so once you, yeah, once you, left, once you left the boundaries of your town, then you can start to shorten and combine. InshaAllah. Allahu Akbar. Are you, are you covering the distance? The, so, so there's a certain distance. We'll, we'll get to the distance. It's, it's about a certain, there's a, there's a certain distance that you need to travel or intend to travel before these rulings apply. All right, a certain distance. All right, uh, the third condition for, for shortening. 
is that the traveler not intend to stay at his destination for four days. In other words, if you intend to stay for three days, then you can shorten the salah. If you are there for four days, then you are not allowed to shorten because now you're considered a resident. This does not include the day of arrival and departure. All right, so I arrive on Monday. I, I travel and I arrive on Monday. Then you have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. All right, and anything beyond that, anything beyond that would be residency. All right, so I'm, I'm intending to stay for more than three days. Then I'm a resident. All right, so if one does not make this intention, the destination he's traveling to bears the same ruling as his hometown. So yes. Yes. So the day you're, you're the day you're arriving, and the day you're leaving is not considered. Day zero. Day zero. Yeah. Yes. So if you arrive at night, right? If you arrive at night time, then it will be the next day. So that that night one base it, 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 will, it will be for the next day. The next day would be day one for you. Day one. For you. If you arrive in the day, then that day is. You don't consider that day. All right, so it's not including the day of, uh, of you arriving or leaving. So there, are there are other opinions. All right, there are other opinions. <clears throat> Some uh, opinions mention uh, 15 days, 18 days. Um, the proof for this position is that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when they made the uh, the it was either Hajj or Umrah. I think it was it was Hajj, the, the farewell Hajj. Uh, they went and. Rasulullah SAW instructed the Muhajirun that whoever is staying for more than uh, three days uh, or don't, don't stay for more than three days. Right? Do not stay for more than three days. And uh, the reason for that is that they were not, those the Sahaba who, who made the Hijrah, they were not allowed to return back to Mecca. Right? Because they left Mecca as a immigrant. So they were not allowed to become a resident ever again at Mecca. Because they made Hijrah for Allah's sake. Right? And if, if you move back to Mecca, then you would lose that status. So they were only allowed to remain in Mecca as a traveler. So he told them, he instructed them that if you stay for, don't, don't stay for longer than three days. Because if you do that, now you're a resident, and now you, lo you lost your, your hijrah. You lost the reward of your hijrah. So this is the, the proof they use to say that uh, more than three days is residency. Right, but, but why is it applying to them? Because after this amount of days, they become a resident. All right, so even the, 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 the context is for them, but the ruling is general because you become a resident after, after more than three days. All right, as I said, there are other, other views, uh, but this is the, the, the proof for this view. If you do not know how long you're going to be staying, it's going to be uh, coming up after that. All right, so this is the case of when, uh, when one intends to stay somewhere for less than four days or does not know how long they will remain there because of some matter that they're taking care of. So if you don't know how long you're going to stay there, all right, there's some matter that you're waiting for. All right, there's something that you're waiting for. Then you can uh, remain in that state uh, up to 18 days minus the days of arrival and departure. Right, up to 18 days. And uh, the evidence is mentioned there uh, underneath the hadith of Abu Dawood who says that uh, Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu said, I fought alongside the Messenger وسلم, and I witnessed the fath with him, the conquest of Mecca. He stayed in Mecca for 18 nights and only prayed two units. This is because during the year of the fath, the Prophet وسلم, stayed in Mecca for this period of time in order to fight the Hawazin tribe. He shortened his prayers and he did not know how long he would have to stay there. All right, so why did he... Uh, why did he uh, shorten for 18 days? Because he was waiting on something, or he was there to fight the Hawazin tribe, and he did not know how long he was going to stay there. All right, so if you are, you don't know how long you're going to stay, then you can take the, the the rulings of the travel shortening up to 18 days. Anything beyond 18 days, then you go back to being a resident. Yeah. Yes. Yes, then you're a resident. You know you will be a resident. What happens if the person is 
No shortening, right. So, so once you intend to stay there for more than three days, the minute you arrive, you are resident, right? It's not after the, the three days. So, you know, you, you land in a different city, right? Um, Los Angeles, and you intend to stay there for a two-week vacation, right? The minute you land there, you're a resident, right? Once you, once you land there, once you enter into Los Angeles, then you're a resident. And you take the ruling of being a resident because you intended to stay there for more than three days. While you're in the process of traveling, you have the dispensation of shortening. But once you reach your destination, then you are a resident if you intend to stay there for more than three days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're you're not state of travel and you're not intending to stay there more than those days, more than three days. And as we said, not including the day of departure and uh, arrival and departure. Yeah. So let's say you go to Nevada mm -hmm. for two weeks. Yes. So does Nevada become your new hometown? How long were you in Nevada for? So as long as you are you land, you landed in Nevada and you intended to stay there for that period of time, then you are res, you are considered a resident. If you are not staying there for more than three days, then you're a traveler, right? But so you, how long were you staying in there for? Well, you're probably going to go and come from there throughout the two weeks. You're, you're, but are you staying for more than three days in Nevada at, at any one period of time? Uh, so that would that would come down to that. It would come down to that. As long as you, you land it in that place and you intend to stay there for more than three days, not including the day of arrival and departure, then you are a resident. You're considered a resident of that, of that locality. But you're It, it, it's not about whether you live there or not. It has nothing to do with you live there or you're intending to live there. It says when are you when are you considered to be in the state of a travel versus not. And if you and it goes by the, the days, more than three days, then you are no longer considered to be having the dispensations of a traveler, right? Whether you you live there or not, it doesn't matter if you live there or not. Right. But if, let's say, you, are, you're, you, you travel there, and after two days, I'm leaving to go somewhere else. And then after those two days, I'm coming back. That's different, because you're not staying there for any one period of time more than the, 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 the three days. Yeah. Which ruling? Okay, so if you want, so this is the Hanafi Madhab. The Hanafi Madhab is 15 days, right? 15 days of, uh, you can shorten for 15 days, right? So you can take that position, no problem. However, you need to bear in mind that in the Hanafi Madhab, they don't allow combining. Hanafi Madhab does not allow combining of the Salahs together. So what they say is combining is Delaying one salah until the very end and praying the other salah at the very beginning. But it has to be within this time. So if you do take that position, you can't mix and match to, to create a scenario where it's not valid according to anybody. Right? So if you do take that, then you should not be combining your salah. Allah Alright, we'll move on and we'll have questions at the end, or else we're we're gonna we're not gonna be able to get, get through anything. All right, condition number four, that one follow someone who is uh, not, that one not follow someone who is resident. All right, so you are in a state of travel, but you're praying behind somebody who is a resident, then you need to pray full, even if, if, even if you are a traveler. All right, so you go to a masjid, you're a traveler, and you go to the masjid and the imam is praying Aisha, you have to pray four. 
right? And this is any part of the salah. As long as you join the, the imam in any part of the salah, then you have to pray in full. You join the imam in the final tashahud. You have to get up and pray four, all right? You join him in any part of the salah. Any part of the salah, then you have to pray four. All right, that's following the uh, imam who is resident. And it is recommended that, um, now the other way around, you are leading people who are residents, then you can pray two, and they will get up and they will pray the remaining two. And it's recommended that you, either before the salah or, even, or after the salah, you inform them that I'm a traveler, finish your salah. Because sometimes people might be confused. All right, so you either tell them before or after that I am I'm a traveler, I'm praying only two, and then they will get up and pray afterwards, the remaining two. All right, uh, and the evidence is uh, related by uh, Ahmed with an authentic chain of transmission on the authority of Ibn Abbas that he was asked, what about the traveler who prays two units when he is by himself and four when he's behind the residence? He said that is the sunnah, that is the sunnah. And uh, the, uh, the hadith on the narration mentions that uh, Imam radiallahu anh said, to the people, oh people of the town, you must pray for, we are travelers. So he informed them that uh, even though I'm a traveler, I'm praying two, you guys have to get up and, and, and complete your four. All right, so that is uh, the ruling for shortening. <clears throat> All right, so in uh, summary, conditions for shortening is that the salah is owed while you're traveling, performed while you're traveling. Going beyond the walls of the, or buildings of your town and not intending to stay for four days or more. And not praying behind a resident. All right, combining prayers. All right, combining prayers. Now, combining prayers is not as emphasized as shortening. Because there's, as we previously mentioned, there is an ikhtilaf on what does it mean to actually combine the, the, the prayers. So be, because of that, the, the scholars have said that it is actually better to pray in time, even if you're traveling. It is still better to pray in the correct timings. It is still better to pray in the correct timings. Although it is allowed to combine, well, because there is the ikhtilaf amongst the scholars of what is actually meant by combining, they say it is better to pray the salah in its correct timing, in its original timing. As for shortening, then it is better to shorten. So shortening, there's, there's no difference of opinion about shortening. So shortening, you shorten. Combining, you know, it's better to pray in the correct timings, but you have that option to combine if it, the, the situation is, uh, circumstances are difficult. All right, when it comes to combining, there are two categories of combining. There's what we call jam'u taqdeem. This is where you bring the later prayer forward, right? Bring the later prayer forward, which would be bringing asr in the dhuhr time or bringing uh, isha in the maghrib time. It's called jam'u taqdeem, bringing the later prayer forward. And then we have jam'u ta'khir, delaying the earlier praying. It should be delaying the dhuhr until asr time or delaying the maghrib until isha time. And these are the only prayers that you can combine. Dhuhr and asr together or maghrib and isha together. No other combination works. Right? It's either dhuhr and asr or it is maghrib and isha. So fajr cannot be combined with anything. Not, not before, not after. And uh, asr cannot be combined with maghrib. Right? Isha cannot be combined with fajr. Fajr cannot be combined with dhuhr. So it's only, it's only dhuhr and asr and maghrib and isha together. All right, so as we said, dhuhr and asr and maghrib and isha. All right, so there's certain conditions for jam'u taqdeem. There are certain conditions for praying, uh, bringing forward the later prayer. Uh, the first is sequence, that they need to be done in order, in the correct order. So if you are in a state of travel and you want to combine the dhuhr with asr, then you need to pray dhuhr first. You cannot pray asr first. You have to pray dhuhr first and then asr. The second condition is that you have to intend. You have to make an intention that you are combining. All right? If you don't make that intention, then you're essentially praying asr early. All right? So you have to have that intention that uh, when you are praying dhuhr, that somewhere either at the beginning or even in the middle of the dhuhr, somewhere along the line, before you start the next salah, that you have, you have an intention that I'm praying asr afterwards. Uh, number three, immediate succession. There cannot be a gap between dhuhr and asr. All right, so you pray dhuhr 
and you want to combine it with Asr, you cannot go and have a meal. Right? You cannot go to um, a restaurant and, and, and have a buffet and then come back and pray, and pray Asr. You have to pray it right afterwards, right? Because this is combining. Otherwise, if you have a, a delay, then you have to wait until the Asr time comes in after that. All right, you have to be in a state of travel at the start of the second prayer. So if you are, you pray Dhuhr, and you wanted to pray Asr as well after that, but by the time you were ready to start the Asr prayer, you became a resident. Then you have to wait until the Asr time comes in. How would that happen? Like for example, somebody is, um, you're, you're on, on, a, on a boat, right, for example, and then you pray Dhuhr, and then as you are finishing Dhuhr, you reach your town. You reach your town. You reach your, res your resident town. Then you have to wait until the Asr time comes in because now you're a resident. So you have, to, you have to be in a state of travel at the start of the second prayer as well. All right, so uh, coming back to combining. Hadith is in Bukhari uh, on the authority of Ibn Abbas who said the Messenger وسلم, would combine between Dhuhr and Asr when he was traveling and he would combine between Maghrib and Isha. And in the Hadith of Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, combined prayers when he was traveling towards the Battle of Tabuk. He combined between Dhuhr and Asr and between Maghrib and Isha. Sa'id ibn Jubair said that I asked Ibn Abbas what made him do that and he replied he wanted for his ummah not to, have, to, not, not to be in difficulty. All right, as we said, uh, combining prayers is two categories. Jam'u taqdeem and jam'u ta'khir. Uh, coming back to the conditions for jam'u taqdeem. All right, the, so the first condition we said is proper sequence. The earlier prayer must be prayed first. The later prayer prayed after. Second condition is uh, the intention to combine the second prayer with the first before finishing the first. All right, so if you are praying dhuhr, you must have the intention before you start Asr, that you're going to combine. All right? Or you're praying Maghrib, you have to have the intention before you finish Maghrib that you're going to combine with Isha. And it is preferable that you have this intention at the opening takbir of the first Salah. So you're praying Dhuhr, at the beginning of your Dhuhr, I'm intending to pray Dhuhr and then Asr afterwards. That's the best thing. If you forgot, then even during the Dhuhr prayer, you can still make that intention before you start the, uh, the next Salah. All right, uh, the third, as we mentioned, immediate succession between the two prayers, meaning that as soon as you finish the first, then you go and complete the second. So you don't, know, you, you don't do any dhikr. Right? You leave off the dhikr. You leave off the, the, the nawaf, the, the, the sunnah prayers after dhuhr, or any other sunnah prayers. You don't pray those. All right? No gaps. Uh, that is customarily acknowledged to be a long delay. All right? So if a person, maybe you have to use the bathroom, quickly use the bathroom, come back, then that would customarily not be considered to be a, a delay. Right? So you can still go and come back and combine afterwards. But if it is to the point where this would be considered to be a delay without any reason, then you're no longer allowed to combine in that situation. You have to wait for that second salat to come in. All right? So this is very important when you are combining that as soon as you finish the first, pray the second one right away. Give the ikhama and pray the second salat right away. Don't engage in any conversations or, or anything else of that nature. Pray the second salah right away. And uh, this is, evidence for this is mentioned in the hadith of Bukhari. Uh, Al-Bukhari, he related an authority of Ibn Umar who said that, I saw that when the Prophet ﷺ had to leave quickly, he would delay Maghrib and pray it as three. Then he would say the taslim and barely wait before calling the iqamah for Isha. He would then pray it as two units and say the taslim. All right, so this is the proof and evidence that you need to uh, pray it right afterwards. And this is what it means by combining. Because if you don't do that, then you're not combining. Right? Essentially, if you delay, then you're not combining the two together. You're praying them separately. And in that case, you need to wait until the, other, the second salah comes in. Uh, the fourth is that one's traveling lasts until one has started the second prayer. Which means that there's nothing wrong when, with one arriving at, uh, at one's home while praying it. If, if you are in the middle of praying and you arrive in your hometown then you can continue to shorten because you, you, you started while you were traveling. Right? But if before the salah you became a resident, then you're no longer allowed to combine in that, in that scenario. 
All right. Um, conditions for jam'u ta'khir. So we'll take the last thing and then end and with that for today. So jam'u ta'khir, this is when you delay the uh, earlier prayer and you play, pray it in the time of the second salah. All right. So dhuhr and asr, you combine them by praying dhuhr in asr time. Or maghrib, you pray it with isha in isha time. And there are two conditions for that. The first condition uh, is that you make the intention. You have to have the intention. You have to have the intention. So the time for dhuhr comes in. You need to intend that I am delaying dhuhr until asr time. If you do not make that intention, then your salah would be what? It wouldn't be void, but let's say the, so the dhuhr time comes in. And Asr time is 5 o'clock. And I did not make any intention to pray Dhuhr. I'm a traveler, but I did not make any intention to pray Dhuhr uh, at Asr time. And then Asr time came in. And I pray Dhuhr. That is Qadha. Right? That would be Qadha. That would not be Ada. All right? So you have to have the intention to pray uh, that Salah in the later time. If you don't have the intention, then you're praying it out of its time. All right? So the... First condition is that you make the intention to de delay the earlier prayer during its original time. So for example, if the time for dhuhr was to finish, and you did not make that intention to delay dhuhr and combine it with asr, then this would be qadha, this would be makeup, and you'll be sinful for delaying it. All right, the second condition is that one's traveling lasts until one has completed both prayers. All right, this is similar to the previous condition, that uh, if you become a resident before the... Uh, before the praying both prayers, then this would be considered to be makeup. All right. So let's say you are traveling, and you delay dhuhr. You intend to delay dhuhr until asr time, and then when asr time comes in and you are ready to pray, you become a resident. You become a resident. In that situation, you are. This would not be considered to be uh, combining anymore. This would be makeup. However, it would be makeup without sin. Right? Because you, you had that option to delay it. So you delayed it. Right? You had the option to delay it. You delayed it until you became a resident. So no, now you're a resident. That salah, that dhuhr that you're praying, because you're a resident, it is now considered to be a makeup prayer. You're not no longer a traveler. But it would be travel without the makeup without sin, right? because you had that intention. All right, now, question. If you do intend to delay, let's say, dhuhr, until asr time, and now you're in a state of travel, and the asr time comes in, and you want to pray them now together, do you have to pray it in order? No. You don't have to pray it in order. All right? Because... At that point, the, it's, it's recommended. It's recommended to pray them in order. But at that point, each, the, the dhuhr time is the asr time. So whether you pray before or after, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. All right? In terms of validity. It's better, though, to pray it in order. But if you uh, pray asr first, is that valid? Yes, because you're praying asr in its time. And if you pray dhuhr afterwards, it's valid because... You are, Dhuhr is Asr time. All right, so the condition of proper sequence between the two prayers is not mentioned here. All right, you can start with ever, you, which one you want to, but it is Sunnah though to, to pray it in the order. It is Sunnah to pray it in the order. <clears throat> All right, um, so almost a time, but we'll stop here for today, inshallah. Next time, we're going to go over the distance. It's also a very important topic, the, the actual distance for which you can combine uh, and some other related issues as well as some of the etiquette and manners of travel. The dhikr? So you can do the dhikr after the, after the second salah. So, so the dhikr that is between the first, after the first salah, you don't do that. Right? Because you need to pray right after. But afterwards, you can make the dhikr, and you can also make the sunnah. If there's a sunnah, you can make the sunnah, for example, the, uh, the sunnah of Isha. You can, make, you can make that after praying Isha. But you would not make the, the sunnah for Maghrib.
So you, oh, so the, 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 the mm. so you do the dhikr after Isha, and if it suffices for both, yes. Allah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the iqama is a, a sunnah, so you should do the iqama afterwards. So you, you you can you give the adhan for one one adhan for both, and iqama for each one. So iqama for each salah. Well, in general, you, you, it's, it's not necessarily recommended to pray the sunnahs while you're traveling. Um, you can if you want to, but there's a hadith on that. So the question is about uh, praying the sunnahs for traveling, uh, the, the, the normal sunnahs before and after for traveling. There's a hadith that says that um, whoever is uh, sick or traveling and uh, they're in that state, then they will be, it will be written for them the reward of the sunnas as if, uh, as if they were healthy and not traveling. There's a hadith on that. Which indicates that it's not necessarily recommended to, try, uh, to perform these sunnas while you're traveling. Uh, but if you had the habit of doing it while you were a resident, or you, ha you had a habit of doing it while you were healthy, and you become sick, or you have a habit of praying the sunnas while you are a resident, and then you become a traveler, and you're not able to do it, you still get the reward of doing it. You still get the reward of doing it. All right, so there's a hadith on that. Even, but the condition is that you were consistently performing it while you are healthy or while you are a resident. Then even if you don't perform it while you're sick or while you are traveling, then you still get the reward for that. It would, it would be optional. It would be optional. Okay. So that would go back, go back to, can you make up, can you make up sunnas? So the, the time for maghrib, right, would be um, after you pray the maghrib. The, the, the time for the sunnah, the maghrib is after you pray the maghrib. So you pray the isha now. And you pray the Maghrib afterwards, the Sunnah for Maghrib afterwards, that maybe that would be considered to be a makeup of that. You can make up Sunnahs, right? You can make up uh, Sunnah, say, say you missed a certain. There, there's a hadith on that as well. Right? We had mentioned this earlier that uh, one of the wives of Rasulullah, she saw him praying uh, a Sunnah, and it wasn't a Salah time. And he, she asked him, and, she, and he said that, uh, I was busy doing such and such, I did not get to pray the Sunnah. So now I'm, now I'm praying it now. So he was essentially making up that sunnah. So you can make it up uh, in, in that regard. Allahu Akbar. Right. No, no. If, you, if you're not regular, you won't get the reward. You have to be regular. <laughs> you have to be regular. <laughs> yeah, that's a different topic. I yeah, we'll touch on that inshallah uh, in another session. Inshallah. All right, well, we'll conclude here. Subhanahu wa bihamdik. Nashallahu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.